Good morning, family. It is so great to be with you here on the first Sunday of the year. I mean, we made it. This this is great. I mean, I, I <laughs> it's not like I doubted we would make it or anything like that, but how many know that sometimes just when you get here, it's just surprising, even though you knew it was coming. And I feel like this year, considering the year we just had, people are maybe a little more surprised that we made it to the first of the new year. And um, I say that generally speaking, because I actually feel like I had a pretty good year, 2020. Um, The faithfulness of God was so real uh, in this past year. And uh, we had some highlights, some milestones in our own family. My son, Josiah, uh, who was just leading worship, he graduated high school. And he uh, started on his studies towards music and worship. And my daughter, Faith, she started a new business and is experiencing growth and increase there. Craig and I bought a new home. That's exciting. And now our family just, um, gosh, we just have such a sense of comfort and refuge in that home. And it's been good. 2020 was was good to us. And, and of course, the challenges were there. I mean, we are living through COVID as well, uh, like everyone else. And um, there was the election that we've been riding out. And uh, the the riots, of course, all the racism, the curfews. The, there's a lot that was that happened in 2020. But God has been so good. He has been so good. Um, even loss. We experienced loss. Craig's dad passed away. and We couldn't be with family. And that was very difficult. But God has been so good. And I know that God gave so much more than 2020 took. Can someone say amen? Amen. I'm grateful and I'm hopeful and I'm so very thankful for what he's done in my life. In Acts chapter 16, it relays Paul's start of the church in Philippi. And this, the letter to the Philippians later in the New Testament is written by Paul while in prison after this church has been established. And, and today I get to start this new series on, on Paul's letters to the Philippians, wrapped around the common theme of how our story is a living expression of the story of Jesus. So today, Philippians living my Jesus story. Come on. This is going to be a great one. So today, the first Sunday of the year, I begin by reading Philippians 1, 1 to 11. So that's 1, 1, 1, 1. Someone say new beginnings. Someone say a fresh start because number one is the number of new beginnings and new things in our lives. So this is exciting. Here we go. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ Jesus the Messiah, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including the overseers and deacons, <laughs> just in case, you, it was including these guys as well. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. I thank my God in every remembrance of you. How many would like someone to say that about them? Always offering every prayer of mine with joy for all of you, thanking God for your participation and partnership in advancing the good news from the first day you heard it until now. I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect it and complete it until the day Jesus returns. It is right for me to feel this way about you because you have me in your heart as I have you in mine. Since both my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the good news, all of you share his matchless grace with me. For God is my witness how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And here's where I want to focus today, okay, these next few verses. Verse 9, and I pray that your love may abound more and more and extend to the fullest development 
in knowledge and all keen insight, displaying itself in greater depth in real knowledge and in practical insight. Now, what, why is Paul praying this? Like, how does this prayer for the Philippians and prayer for us today reflect our Jesus story? Well, let's, let's see. Let's keep going. Verse 10. So that you may learn what is vital. This is guidance. What we may learn what is vital. Guidance. And approve and prize what is excellent and of real value. This is instruction for our lives. And that you may be pure and blameless. This is being purified before him until the day of Christ. Actually, this is living lives that lead others away from sin. So what he's saying is that love is so important because love will guide you, love will instruct you, and love will purify you. Your purified life actually will lead others away from sin instead of to it. See, I wonder how often do we or are we semi-responsible for other sin. I feel like often. I do. I feel like often because we infuriate people. <laughs> we exasperate people. We anger people in traffic. Come on, somebody admit it. You know, we hurt. We explore the gray areas. And then we lead young ones in the faith astray. We're free. And in our freedom, we cause others to stumble. Maybe we have our priorities so badly aligned that it leaves our kids to, to watch us put everything first other than Jesus. I mean, Pastor Craig, when he opened the service, he challenged us to bring our families together to watch this live stream today. And I just think, how easy is that? You're like, well, you don't know. You haven't been at my house. <laughs> it's not that easy. But on a scale of like 1 to 10, with 10 being the hardest thing ever, I feel like that's pretty easy. This live stream alone, one hour of your week. And we were talking to some friends about this earlier this week. But one hour, that is 60 minutes. You know how many minutes you have in a week? You have 10,080 minutes in a week. 60. That's it. 60 minutes to gather your family together and to worship and to engage and to focus on Jesus together as a family. And you're like, well, it's not such a big deal. You, you don't think it's a big deal? You wait till we get back to in-person services. And then your teenager's just like, why do we have to go to church now when before we could watch it or not watch it or watch it while we drive or watch it while we eat or watch it while we shop or watch it? Now I'm meddling. <laughs> See, I know sometimes things happen and time gets away and, and it wasn't intentional. And I, I'm not talking about that. That's, that's, that's life, you know. But it's a slippery slope. And it's, it's, it's so dangerous. It's dangerous ground to get on. You know, before you know, you're booking Sunday morning outings because you're like, well, it's kind of technically my free time. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move on before you all log out on me. <laughs> If anyone has noticed the viewers drop, you tell me. I'm just kidding. I'm just calling us higher, myself included, this morning. Because we're better than that. And he is worthy of it all. And our families and our kids are worthy of the time and the effort to bring them together. But anyway, let's go on. Paul says to love well. Why? Because he says love will guide you, love will instruct you, and love will purify you. Then he says, once you get this love thing down, he writes this in verse 11. May you abound in and be filled with. Abound in and be filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God, so that his glory may be both revealed, manifested, and recognized in you. Okay, the fruits of righteousness it should surround you, it should be in you, and it should flow through you. Surround you, be in you, flow through you. So then what are they? What is the fruits of righteousness? Right standing with God, we know that. But what else? Well, we know it's something you do because it says it's manifested. And we know it's something you can see because it says it's recognized. 
right standing with God. And number two, expressed love. See, it all goes back to love. Full circle back to love. It surrounds you, it's in you, and it flows through you. And if it, if, see, if it does surround you and if it is in you, it is impossible for it not to flow through you. And this is your Jesus story. This is what you want. This is what I want. This is how we want to live. We want to live like Jesus and we want to love like Jesus. This is our Jesus story. Every year, our family We ask God for a word or words for the coming year. We've been doing this for several years now. Our words from last year were these. Home, good gifts, change, bloom, uncommon, unusual, build. When we first put them on our word board last January, they seemed a little disjointed. <laughs> we were like, did we even hear right? Like, what? Like, did we make that up? But wow, <laughs> could they be more accurate? We bought a house, home, Josiah's entire schooling, if you heard that testimony, and plus more, um, was paid for. Uh, we've seen so much change. We've watched faith flourish and bloom in her spiritual insight and in her natural gifting. Can someone say uncommon and unusual for this year? And build. See, there's a rebuilding after so much has been torn down. This year, and I'm not going to share all of my family, everyone in my family, their words, because they might want to do that sometime on their own. But I'll tell you mine. Actually, one of mine I share with Faith because we both had the same word. Interesting. My words are joy and redemption. Redemption is the one I share with Faith. She also had that one. And I had this word joy even several weeks ago uh, before I started literally seeing it everywhere. And um, we were going out one evening um, as a family uh, for the night over Christmas. And we we drive past this hotel and (laughs) Someone says, hey, look over there. And on these huge building, there's these lights that say J-O-Y. This huge in San Diego, joy. I'm like, (gasps) I almost started to cry. Uh, I didn't say anything to my family at that point. But joy is one of the words I have and redemption. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, you get no feeling of depression. He's encouraging, he's hopeful, and he's joyful. It's interesting, though, because he was in prison. So Paul, here he is in prison, had joy in the middle of it. See, he was not able to live the call that God had put on his life that, like he maybe felt it was going to be lived. But he had joy. Paul had joy in his pain. There was, there was grief. When you lose something, when you lose the way that you feel like you should live or the, the call or something that God has put on your life, there is a loss that comes with it. There's pain. But yet there was joy. Paul had joy in his persecution. He was attacked and he was charged even though he was peaceful and he was innocent. But yet there was joy in the middle of all of this. So I wonder, in this coming year for me, will my joy look like what I think it will? (laughs) Will my joy feel like I think it will? Will my joy produce in me a strength like I know it will? And then redemption. See, I believe that Jesus will redeem all things that have been lost, all things that have been taken, all things that have been stolen from myself and from you this year. He is the Redeemer. The Redeemer, it is who he is. Jesus lived the fullest expression of joy, and he saw all things redeemed. In his imprisonment, you're like, well, how was he in prison? He was not allowed to be who he truly was. His divine nature was hidden for so long. In his pain, he showed strength during the most difficult of seasons of his life when he lost a friend. 
when he was tempted in the wilderness and on his journey to the cross. And in his persecution, they spit on him. They nailed him. But for the joy before him, the word says, he endured all things. Where are the joy that was before him? See, through all of this, his joy was made complete. And he saw full redemption for himself and all of humankind. This year holds the potential to be and to do all the greatest that God has. It also holds the ability to trap, to scare, to hold us in a pattern of pause. Just We're just waiting for everything to be over. We're just, we're just riding it out. We're just waiting it out. What, what is that anyway? There's no waiting. There's no pausing. The kingdom is constantly moving forward. It says that the kingdom of heaven advances in the, the, and we take it, the righteous take it by force. The violently righteous take the kingdom of God by force. We are constantly advancing. If something is not moving forward, then it is going backward. There is no pause in the kingdom of God. If you're on pause, you're missing it. But to look forward, I believe sometimes at what we want, I believe it's helpful to look back. So when I think about this, I ask myself this question. What does the year 2020 remember of me? When people reflect on my life, when they think about me in 2020, are they thankful? Like Paul says, I'm so thankful every time I remember you. Are their emotions filled with, with joy? Do I put a smile on their face or not? Did I live it well in the pain, in the hardship, in the challenges, in the uncommon, in the unusual? In the waiting, did I waste it? I think about these things. See, God's faithful to complete, it says, to continue the good work that he has started in me and that he has started in you. But if I never let him start, there's nothing for him to finish. I've given him nothing to build on. I can't grow in 2021 what I shrunk in 2020. First, I got to turn that thing around. Maybe that's how you feel. Maybe you're like, I got to turn some things around. I, I just let this year of the unknowns and the unusuals, I, I just let it put me on pause. I let it not just put me on pause, but I let it move me backwards and, and me and my family, we just, we kind of regressed a little bit and we were advancing and, and it looks like now we just regressed and I got to turn that thing around because I want to give them something to build on in 2021. And then after I look back, I look ahead and then I ask myself this. I've already asked myself, what does 2020 remember of me? And now I ask myself, what Will the year 2021 say of me? What is my Jesus story? What will be your Jesus story? See, I don't believe in this. I don't believe it's whatever will be, will be. It's whatever I can be, I will be by the grace of God in me and the tenacity of the Spirit through me. See, we all get our very own Jesus story. You get yours and I get mine. And as you end this year and as you begin the new one, I encourage you in this to come to the understanding that this coming year, doesn't get to choose its outcome. You choose. I choose. Jesus gets to choose. And as we choose him in living to the fullest for him, we will live out our Jesus story. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me and listening this morning, for tuning in to this live stream. If you need prayer, I, I encourage you 
to reach out to our pastoral team. We would love to connect with you. Maybe, maybe you haven't found Jesus and, and, and you're like, I want that today. I would encourage you to call out to him today. The Bible says that he is as close as the mention of his name. And it just takes one word for everything in your life to change. And that word is Jesus. That word is Jesus. There's no better way to start your year than with him. Let me pray for you as we close today. Father, I thank you for every heart that's listening, that's tuning in today. I thank you that you are for them and not against them. And I thank you that it doesn't matter what their last year looked like. Their new year can be different. It can be better. It will be better by the grace of God. So I ask for everyone that's in need of something. Maybe it's healing. Maybe it's salvation. Maybe it's friendship. I ask that you would be what they need today, that you would surround them, that they would feel the hug of God, the hug of the Father on their life today, like they've never felt before. I ask for encounters with you. We know that you are a touchy-feely God and that when we need to be touched and when we need to feel you, you allow us to do that. So I pray for an invading of your presence in every home, in every heart, in every life today. That you would be all that they need you to be in this very moment. And that they would see redemption in their lives for all the things they lack. In your name, amen.